so much for coming. Pleasure. Really appreciate it. Eric. So how did this all come about? Did was this? Of course, Lee, <laughs> Lee directed the Gospel of Colonus, and you. So you've known Clarence for this must go back now thirty years. What brought about the film? Well, a couple things. Mm-hmm. Um, I always felt that Clarence was always a big star, and that. Oh, Mike, 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 there Mike. Go. Oh, yeah. there we go. Okay. I think that uh, what dawned on me was the fact that when we did Gospel of Colonus uh, and then the life Clarence was living afterwards, there was this great parallelism between the two and that the story of one was turning into the story of another. Um, Oedipus and Gospel of Colonus, the Sophocles play, uh, is on a pilgrimage looking for faith throughout the play. And um, I think Clarence did a brilliant job of work. And it was a perfect pairing between he and Morgan Freeman. And uh, everybody learned from everybody. Morgan learned a lot about music. Clarence learned a lot about acting. <laughs> and it was a great combination. But the key here was that I always wanted to... Uh, be able to show that Clarence was living the part in a way. It wasn't just playing it. He was living it. Uh, the part is close to uh, the myth of Job in the Bible. You know, this is a man who's, you know, had an enormous life, a great life, and uh, is struck by adversity and keeps his faith through the adversity. And this is a major story. This is a myth that we all want to live by. And I think Clarence embodied that myth. And the fact that he was able to play the Greek version of the myth in Gospel of Clarence was just luck. It would just happen to be a perfect match. So I thought I wanted to say this. And it was a chance to uh, work with Clarence again. And uh, I felt it was a great experience. Um, also, my buddy Sam and I uh, really wanted to uh, find a way to feature Clarence in a work, and in a work that uh, was totally capable of demonstrating his power and his greatness by showing Clarence to the past and showing Clarence to the present, and how one quality became, in other words, what was maybe power and brilliance earlier, became this deep, deep spirituality later. And I wanted to be able to say this in a film. And I think this is what went into it. Yeah. I mean, you've come up with the concept of the book, the book of Clarence. Right, I mean, yeah. And it was this yeah. part of your original thing? It's a it lesson. It kind of grew out of the... It grew out of the yeah. work, uh -huh. you know. It was uh, something that people can learn from. Ah. I think, you know, that, that Clarence embodies a kind of a teaching. And I think that we had a chance to show two or three of his, you know, comments uh -huh. that were very incisive and people can take to heart and learn right. by. There's an element of a sermon in it, an element, but more than that, it's a teaching right. in the way that the book is a teaching. So I wanted to represent that in the title. Sure. Maybe we could ask the audience for some questions. Uh, this is kind of a setup. I'm sorry about the awkwardness of the interview here, so we can kind of keep swinging around. Uh, yeah. Observations, uh, questions? Uh, yes, sir. Up there. Um, well, I was wondering if you all could elaborate a little more on the story about the vision where uh, they, the, one of the members of the band had the vision of the gun and, and then ended up in tragedy. Mm. That's, that's a, uh, Asking about the Velma trailer the shooting. The Velma trailer, you know. Um, what maybe, specifically about that story? Well, I mean, did in you, retrospect, where did the person feel like the vision came from? Was it like an ominous vision or what? I think Clarence, what he's asking is, where did Velmer get this idea of wanting a gun? Who knows? 
<laughs> had, had he ever talked about guns before? Yeah. He had? Yeah. <laughs> he seemed to be into guns. Well, you have to understand that when God plans something, man cannot unplan it. And this had to be so I could be. And uh, due to the fact that uh, Vim was a talented young man and two, two leaders cannot form, when you form a group, two leaders cannot stand. One got to go and one got to stand. But you got to understand the process of life uh, evolves around what God put in, 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 don't you know that God sit in heaven and he sees everything you do, everything, all the whiskey you drink, all the wine you drink, he see all that. <laughs> so I cannot answer that question. <laughs> uh, down there is a question in the front. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am? What message do you have uh, for people um, who have uh, a lot of obstacles and adversities in life? And when things are, um, things are not working out, uh, you have this absolutely divine music. Uh, but people who do not have this gift, what do they hold on to? Did everybody hear that? Did you hear it? Um, Everyone they, yeah. has an opportunity to change. It's about what you believe on the inside. So God is waiting for all of us to come to him. All you got to do is say, Lord, I accept you as my personal savior and move forward. But if you don't choose to, ah, then you're on your own. <laughs> <laughs> Do you get that, Clarence? Yeah, I got it. Do you believe in the healing power of music? Music itself can heal? Yes. Yes, sir. He's green. The mic. Yeah, I believe good music can do wonders. Bad music can do it the disaster. <laughs> so my theory is that if the music is good, it's good. And if it's bad, it's bad. So I just want you to know that. Okay. <laughs> uh, see anybody else here? Yes, Miss Pam. Okay. So when you were singing on, when you sang on stage, <clears throat> sometimes it felt like you made up the music as you were singing. Did you ever do that, or did you always sing after you rehearsed? You sing on key the best you can, and when you can't, you can't. Due to the fact that uh, some of this material in here, I would have taken it out of the movie, but I I think it's it's all right. And I show you what the how the bad and the good go together. And if you bad, you bad, and if you good, you good. You, you, for you and, and for, for Clarence. Well, my question only is, it seems that both, both of your faiths are un, unwavering. And we all face spiritual challenges in our life. But, but what comes across for, from both of you is that it's just an absolute. You don't look at it too closely. You don't think about it too much. It just is. Is that fairly true? Or were there, were there occasions when it was hard to keep faith? I failed quite a bit until I learned how to uh, to walk with God and stop trying to do it on my own. That was uh, the best thing that I learned to do. Uh, I don't think that there's a man and a woman that don't fail, but you have to learn just like you have to learn how to walk, eat, the things, the simple things that we do. You have to do that with God as well. It's an everyday journey. It's a process. Okay. Um, 
Lee? Oh, oh yes, up there, ma'am. Yes, I have a question about your CD. Do you have any CDs, upcoming CDs that you're making? Or? There's plans to do a soundtrack, yes. Yeah, that could be six months to a year away. Soundtrack from Ted Yes, that's clearing your eyes. Yeah, this movie is still in process. Yeah, um, uh -huh. it's it is a challenge to do uh -huh. films like this. Yeah. Uh, music documentaries uh, are expensive because uh, uh -huh. there's a lot of rights to clear. So. Lee, could I ask you a question? If Gospel at Colonus was such an, a a seminal event at the time and moved to Broadway, yeah, are, are, have there been after productions? Does it still many? Have a there line? were five productions this year five all over the country: this Los year. Angeles wow. and uh, uh, Canada. Uh, I forget where the other couple were. You know, oh, we're at Washington. And are you casting it in much the same way? You have a group of gospel well, singers. Well, other people are directing it now, and other companies uh -huh. are doing it, which I want to give my blessing to because yeah. you know, uh, I had an idea about it. I got my concept out of the production that PBS taped that we uh -huh. saw parts of in the film, uh, and then now many other directors and many other actors are getting a chance to play those parts, right. and. Uh, <laughs> Morgan Freeman is a little bit of our financial leg at this particular point. I don't think we can get there. Uh, you know, much as I'd love to work with him again, I don't think we can afford to. But uh, I think there are many possible interpretations of the play that I, I welcome people to try. I've always wanted the freedom when I worked on, uh, you know, somebody else's work to be able to interpret it myself and to make it my own production. So I would like to give that freedom to the new directors that are coming yeah and is gospel it's still alive and well it's still it's coming still back to new york Grammys. it's coming you know, back yeah, yeah it's supposed to come back in 2018 to right. uh, city center hey i saw a question there sir <laughs> are there any other uh, gospel spiritual singers who inspired y'all to sing were there any other gospel singers who inspired you sam cook Having a party. Yep. <laughs> well, you know, we have Mahay Jackson. But we have a lot of young, new artists. Um, I brought one here with me tonight, Dwayne Watkins of the Ken Spirituals. There are many gospel singers that you can find just in church. And I think the most, uh, uh, the ones that we really look for today are the ones that really live the life and that are true to the to the ministry. And that's what makes the difference with people. If you're true and you're living it, because uh, we haven't always lived it, and we but we have to again, we have to be true. So there's a lot of good artists out there. There's also a lot of crossover. You know, you get the Aretha's and you know it's gospel behind it or rising it up um, but still I think uh, the experience I had when I you know entered a church community for the first time and later on was that the amazing level of talent that's in, that's inside a church community and there's always some great person coming up you never know where they're coming from great like Carolyn Johnson white uh, you know who hit the high note in gospel colonist was a soloist there uh, Bob and I saw her, you know, testifying, at, you know, in uh, the church in Brooklyn. And it was just amazing what her voice could do. And uh, passed her right there, you know. Oh, maybe one more question. Anybody? Observation? Yeah, ma'am. Ma <laughs> I just wanted to say how much I appreciate being here. It's inspiring to me. Um, his singing, his music. My mother was in and out of mental institutions, and that's all she lived by was gospel music. And she died one week before her birthday. She was in 89, but uh, on her dying bed, she had to sing to her. That's how she made it through. So you truly inspired me today. I'm wow. thankful to be here. Thank you for sharing that. Well, great. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Um, more of music films tomorrow. Um, <laughs> A note at a time and uh, score if you like music soundtrack. It's a beautiful documentary on the composer's your favorite film music. And, and uh, thank you, Ian, for having us. Appreciate you programming the film.
We now have three graticals, the Gradical X, the Gradical I, and the Gradical HD. The Gradical X and the Gradical HD are essentially the same unit. The only difference is you can, with the X, only buy the features you want and get in at a lower price. Both of these units are self-powered and they have video distribution. The I, on the other hand, you need power to use this unit. It only has an SD in, and it has two new features, a lit tally light and a proximity sensor to turn the unit off. And it is small. So this is our new Gradical line, the X, the I, and the HD.